You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall want Processional hymn canted. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My sisters, my brothers, I thank you for your presence today in such number. Uh, this is the capacity of St. Peter, St. Joseph. Can you imagine? Now this is, a, this is the limit of our Sunday celebration there. I pray, and I'm hoping you are praying, that the scourge of this epidemic will be over soon and we will be able to gather uh, as the full uh, uh, worshiping assembly in each of our parishes. <clears throat> we celebrate the memorial of St. Pius X today, a uh, pope who served the church and whose life, whose life uh, served as a true marker between different eras. And so we pray that in this new era, this new normal we live in, the life of faith and the witness of charity that we give to our world will be as a signal, as a life, as, as a sign to the world. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who to safeguard the Catholic faith and to restore all things in Christ, filled, Saint Pius the Ten, filled Pope St. Pius X with heavenly wisdom and apostolic fortitude, graciously grant that following his teaching and example, we may gain an eternal prize. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in that valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So, I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to, it, to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, <clears throat> prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy, Prophecy, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from, my, from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord. God's love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, God's love is everlasting. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those who he redeemed from trouble. Give thanks to the Lord, God's love is everlasting. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way in an inhabited town, hungry, and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Give thanks to the Lord, God's love is everlasting. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Give thanks to the Lord, God's love is everlasting. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to human beings. For he satisfies the thirsty, and the hungry he fills with good things. Give thanks to the Lord, God's love is everlasting. Teach me your paths, my God. 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, we sang, or we, uh, we had the hymn sung, uh, Gather Us Together, primarily because we don't have dem bones, dem bones in our songbooks. And if we did, you can bet I would be, you would be singing that this day. I told Kathy and Sister Mary earlier, uh, yesterday, I didn't know if this reading was coming up in this Ezekiel cycle, because we get the prophet over at different times of the year. But I think this is a perfect word of life to our church, to our society, to our parishes as we move into this new reality, this this family of parishes. You see me struggle. I did not even get the mass intentions correct. I got one out of three right yesterday. Uh, That's not a passing grade, and I can barely keep the hymns and the... uh, psalm response on the right screen. Father Tony sent around his first organizing email, an uh, email group, you know, for planning, for scheduling, and messaging each other. There's 15 people in that group. Think of it. Three priests, business manager, uh, pastoral minister, secretaries, custodians. 15 people that need his guidance, that look to him for leadership. At this point in my life and my health, I'm pretty convinced I could not fulfill that role. That doesn't mean that I don't have some role to play. It will simply be different. The prophet, like all of Israel, looks out and only sees death. And the word of God says, that what you see will live, and even more than that, the graves will open. Perhaps we think my life, uh, my ministry, my time as, as a disciple is over. We have no idea how God is using these bones, putting new sinew, new attachments, new muscle, new life, and finally new breath. How we will be disciples, how we will be one community of faith from Mount Carmel up to Godrich, I really, I don't know. But I am convinced God is leading us through this. And I am convinced that I will be a happier and healthier priest, knowing, having confidence in someone like Father Tony and his abilities. We might just look and see, wow, look, we can only get 27 people in a church on a Sunday. And think, well, this is the end. You can't go on. God is doing something. Just as surely as in the age of Ezekiel, God is leading us through what we think is a valley of bones, what we think is a graveyard, a tomb, and God is bringing new life. I see that. I believe that. I said St. Pius was a person of his age who started a new age and who really gave the church some uh, uh, 
ability, some kind of framework to look at our world. Now that did not mean that somehow it didn't get into trouble. Think of it. He starts the fight against modernism. There were many parts of morality and theology that were simply being attacked. Too much was being lost and someone had to firm things up. Now, years later, of course, when John 23rd becomes Pope, the funny thing is the first thing he does is go into the file room, take out his file, and write, uh, Ron Colley is not a modernist. So, uh, something had gone wrong, of course. The enthusiasm, the dedication of people can constantly fall from that goal of bringing the church, of gathering the church, of uniting God's people, and having that common purpose. I'm under no illusions that we will have many false starts as we gather as one community of faith. But that in no way does, I, does that ever even lead me to question, is this the way forward? Clearly it is. I am willing to undergo whatever for this greater um, goal of having a community of missionary disciples being missionary parishes. I look forward to the life that will be shared from all our six sisters, sister parishes, for their insight, for the depth, just to think of it, the depth of your own life. Who made you a disciple? Who shared the good news with you? Who was your mentor that said, gosh, look what they're doing? Who inspired something in you to do more, to be more? to be that more mature Christian. Now we can look to five other parishes and be on this journey together. Will there be problems? Of course there will. But it is completely worthwhile. Please stand. We join in the prayers of the faithful. We pray for the church throughout the world, uh, for our Holy Father, for all bishops, especially under the patronage of St. Pius X, that all who lead us and Father Tony will be blessed in their faithfulness, their perseverance, and their charity. We pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for our schools as they prepare for the return of students and staff. Uh, that all who are in the education system will be safe and healthy and form that learning community of grace again, we pray to the Lord. We pray for peace in our world, for an end to war and violence, that all people of good faith will bind themselves to each other in sinews and bonds of charity, that life, God's life might fill us, we pray to the Lord. We pray for our sick, especially those who suffer from the uh, outbreak, the epidemic, that through our conscience of uh, observance and through the good work of the doctors and nurses, our society, our world will be restored to health. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the intentions each one of us brings to this Mass especially for the intentions of Tara Hartman. For God's continued blessings in all our lives, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died, for Jean Moriarty, Bill Brand, for Cecilia Farwell, for Teresa Cherney. That God will open the graves of all the faithful departed and fill us with life, we pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for binding uh, one disciple to another, for filling us with the life of the Spirit. Through the intercession of St. Pius X, make us your faithful stewards. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. To earth is given, human hands have made it, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with kindness our oblations and grant, O Lord, we pray, that following the teachings of Pope St. Pius, we may celebrate these divine mysteries with sincere reverence and receive them in a spirit of faith. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Pius X, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, Joseph, his auxiliary, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, Tara Hartman, our teachers and students and staff, our administration at our schools, all doctors and nurses. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise where they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation 
and count it among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Resurrection. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this spotless victim, the, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you're pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, the, bread, the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. <clears throat> In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, Jean Moriarty, Bill Brand, Cecilia Farwell, Teresa Cherney, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. This day our daily bread, give us our trespasses, forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. 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 Lamb of God. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Celebrating the memorial of Pope St. Pius, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the power of this heavenly table, we may be made constant in the faith and be of one accord in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The power of this table it's Pope St. Pius X that started regular communion for young children. Um, think of our first communicants, who literally everything shut down just as they began their preparation. Over the next few weeks, we hope to have them at our Sunday Masses or a Wednesday evening so that they can continue in this, uh, in their initiation and join us at the table. Pray for our young families. There's so much going on for them. And also, a word of confidence, uh, when I mess up a Mass intention, God is not bound by the words of my mouth. Remember, it is your intention. God knows the heart. And whether or not I'm able to say the correct names or even to pronounce them correctly, God knows who you are praying for. And every prayer, every sacrifice of the Mass has that saving power. So please, don't worry when I mess up the Mass intentions. God knows who you are praying for, and that Mass is offered for them. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. We'll have the last two verses of Gather Us Together canted. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die.